pipeline for writing more books. So if you have ideas for other things you think uh, he should write future books on, you can, you can uh, pitch him on your ideas. Um, so he, his most recent book is iPad Means Business, and it's all about um, how the iPad is being received and how excited um, particularly enterprises and, uh, and educational institutions are interested in this new format and the tablet, and what Apple is doing around the tablet as well, some of the software and some of the services that they're offering around this, how this is changing the landscape, uh, what potentially sees, and, and also how he's been using it. A lot of the book is case studies, um, and, and it's some personal experience of his, but case studies of other people. Uh, so, so do uh, dig in and ask about some of the specific ways that people are really using this technology. He's been sort of an anthropologist out there learning about it, and he can tell you all about what he's seeing in tablet usage and where he sees this going. Um, so I think, uh, I think that covers it. Is there anything else I should mention? Okay. My, ne my next book is about Google Plus. Yeah, his next book uh, sounds like will be about Google Plus. And uh, we had been tickled by the idea that it might be, there might be a book out there even further about Google Apps as well. So this is why I say he's maybe open to pitching if you can uh, get him interested in something. But Google Plus is on his mind for sure right now because it's hot. So without further ado, Julio, take it away. And he'll present for a little while, and then we'll open it up to q and A. I, I may uh, ask some questions, but I think we have enough people here that we can just open it up. Thanks. Um, I, I'm really uh, happy to be here because I'm a longtime user of Google services, big, uh, big fan of your company, big fan of your products. Uh, two notes of apology. Uh, number one, I lost my glasses. I don't know where the hell my glasses are. And so uh, you, you guys are all uh, fuzzy blobs, which, it, which is great for my, uh, my stage fright. So, uh, but I'm, a, I'm, I'm gonna, I might be squinting a little bit. Uh, and the other note of apologies, I'm a little intimidated that I'm here on the same day as George R. R. Martin, who is one of my personal heroes. That's a lot of pressure, so. Um, and I'm, what I'm going to do, I was talking to Jason about you know, the appropriate format. I had, I had prepared kind of a long presentation, and his suggestion was de-emphasize that a little bit and, and just uh, have, a, have a conversation. So I'm, I'm going to whip through my deck like super, super fast. Um, if I'm going too fast, you know, slow me down. Um, but you, sh you guys are, are all Google heads, so you should be able to keep up. Um, uh, I'm speaking to you today as a tech book author and as a technolo technology enthusiast. So I'm, I'm, I cover technology, but I'm also uh, uh, fond of technology, which is what makes my job so much fun. Uh, I'm a user and, and lover of most things Google, um, going all the way back to the time when Google first started allowing people to associate their domain names with Google Apps. I've been using you know, Google services for ages. Uh, at the same time, I'm somewhat, I'm a somewhat frustrated uh, Google user. I have some specific issues, some specific problems, some specific complaints, which I'll, I'll briefly address today uh, in, in the form of uh, constructive, uh, courteous criticism. Um, and I'm going to keep things really simple. I'm just going to very quickly touch on three things today. Uh, the first one is the column. The, I read a, a weekly technology column, and my column this Sunday is about Google Apps. So I thought uh, I'd give you guys sort of a sneak uh, preview of that. Yeah, it's very unorthodox for me to be revealing what I'm writing in my Sunday column You know, well prior to that. I hope I don't get in trouble with my boss. But um, I'm going to talk about it a little today. And if you go to my Google Plus, account, you can see the full, full text of the, of the column posted there. Uh, the other thing I'm going to touch on briefly is my iPad book and how, how it relates to Chromebooks, which I'm pretty excited about. And I'll tell you a little bit about my next book, which is about uh, Google+. Plus. Um, and you know, just a, little, just a little background about myself. Um, Google Apps are my life. I have my personal domain name associated with Google Apps. I've, I've done that for ages. Um, I love it. Um, moving my domain name over to Google, this was a long time ago. It, it took me a lot of courage to take that step. I, was, um, I had my domain name somewhere else. The Google option was very appealing. But you know, um, sometimes I don't embrace change as, as freely as some other people. So it was a really big step right up there with marriage and having a kid, for God's sake. I'm only partly kidding about that. 
Um, so Google services are my life. These are examples of other services that are just huge in my life. My Google Voice account is my primary phone number. If you're calling me, you're calling my, my Google Voice. It's, it's, uh, it's my primary number. Uh, Reader is amazing. It's sort of, it's a treasure trove of information every day. I just can't believe it. Um, I've recently got in, gotten into cooking a little bit to help my wife out and being able to search for recipes huge um, task. I recently discovered a uh, Google task canvas view, which is this very elaborate desktop interface that I didn't know was there. It was really amazing, and so I've been using tasks heavily since then. And Google Plus is currently my favorite social network. I'm a big user of Twitter. I hate Facebook. I love Twitter. I've written a book about Twitter, but Google Plus is just really amazing. I really like it a lot. Um, the subject of my, my column for Sunday, uh, I'm just going to whip through this very quickly, is um, I love Google Apps, but I also have some frustrations. Uh, apps for a very long time has been my productivity hub. Uh, uh, I reached a moment of great frustration at the Pioneer Press. The Pioneer Press, where I work, has Windows PCs with Microsoft Word loaded on it, and they're, using the exchange, they're doing the exchange thing. And if you write a story at the Pioneer Press, you're doing it at the paper, and if you go home, you're screwed because if you think of a change you wanted to do in the story, you know, it's back at the paper, and it's like, suddenly it dawned on me. This is madness. It's absolute madness. I should be able to work everywhere from any computer anytime I want. And so I, I did something very rebellious. I didn't ask for permission. I didn't tell anybody anything. I just moved all my work stuff uh, to the Google Cloud, and I've never looked back. I'm the only one at the paper who's done that. Uh, and it's, it's been great, you know, great for productivity. Um, uh, and so it's, it's really, you know, as, as, a, as a family man, it's nice to be able to go home and sort of pick up where I left off at the office if I need to do something at home. Um, but I'm having this very fierce internal debate about the cloud. Um, I, I like the desktop paradigm as well. I mean, I, I, uh, I think, you know, sometimes there's a place for the desktop, and I wonder if, you know, there should be sort of a, a hybrid situation where I'm working in the cloud, but I'm also working on the desktop. I, I realize uh, when I say that, a it is apps too cloud-centric? I realize that's sacrilege in this room, but, you know, this is sort of what I've been thinking about. Um, I've been thinking about cloud desktop hybrids, um, and you guys have you know, something, you know, tools that are sort of like that. There's Google App Sync, there's Google Cloud Connect. Very interesting experiments. As I understand it, they're only regarded as sort of interim measures, but they've, they've been useful for me. Um, and Microsoft's Office 365 uh, is coming on the scene. It's sort of a Google Apps competitor. It emphasizes the web as well as the desktop and has these sort of working together. Very interesting. It's very interesting to me. Uh, Apple's iWork uh, is, a, is a different situation. Apple emphasizes the desktop, but with, uh, with its latest version of iWork and the latest version of uh, the iOS uh, mobile operating system, it's setting up a syncing engine so that if you're working on a Mac, on a Mac laptop or on a Mac desktop or uh, an iPhone or an iPad, it doesn't matter which version of for instance, pages for word processing you're using. You make a change on one device, it's reflected on all other devices. You can't edit the document on the web in the Google way. There's no web interface, but everything is synced from, from uh, device to device. I'm a big Mac user. I'm a big user of Google services and a big user of Macintosh hardware. And this is very interesting to me. Uh, again, I'm a longtime Google Apps user. I love it, but this is the first time I've actually toyed with the idea of actually using Pages as my primary. I've never liked Pages, but this whole iWork sync thing is very interesting. So, um, so Apple, you know, kind of has my attention there. Um, uh, the Mac OS, Mac OS X has auto saving in versions, which is you know similar to the auto saving that I use in, in uh, Google Apps. Uh, seamless editing across desktop and mobile. Um, and he, here, here's the rub, you know, here's where we get to sort of the key problem. Um, if I'm using Google Apps 
on a Mac, a Windows PC, a laptop, a desktop computer, perfect. Yeah, the hardware sort of fades into the background. I get my work done. I'm not worrying I want, I, about my location, physical location. I'm not worrying about which computer I'm on. I'm just focused on my work. But then, uh, but if I try to use Google Apps on the iPad, everything screeches to a halt. Um, earlier today, I had a briefing with a Google Docs manager, and so this slide may be slightly out of date. He he told me that you know they're working on that. They're really they're working to make the mobile experience for Google Docs and Google Apps users better. Uh, so, but my question is, when? Now? Tomorrow? When? Because this, this this Apple stuff is is calling to me, so um, so right now I'm I'm just experiencing too much friction, you know, too few features on the mobile, um, and so that's that's my bottom line. You, you got to fix the whole iPad situation, or I'm you know, unfortunately, I'm just going to move on. So um, and the other thing I I talked to Jason a little bit about this today. I'm I'm a little annoyed that. You know the shiny new bells and whistles that are rolled out to generic Google users are often slow to arrive for paying Google Apps users like myself. And so again, I don't think I'm telling you anything you you haven't heard about. But uh, Google Plus has sort of amplified that frustration because I had to sort of dust off an old generic Google account that I never used to start a Google Plus account, which has taken off. I mean the the amount of energy, the amount of engagement that I have found on Google Plus is amazing. I just, I, in a very short time, I, I, um, uh, I have uh, almost a thousand followers now. Um, all of these great conversations going on, but I'm really stressed out because all of this is happening on this Google account that I don't want to use. My primary Google account is over here, and I'm doing Google Plus over here. And you know, how's that going to work? Is 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 Google going to let me port it over at some point? Uh, how easy is that going to be? Do I have to export my data and then re-import it over here? Um, I, I know you guys are thinking about that, but just I just sort of throw that out as a source of frustration. So, um, and you know, Google Plus is just you know the latest example of that for me. As a paying apps user, I want the shiny new stuff. So, um, uh, good. I should I should mention that Google Apps is very big in my family. I, I persuaded all my relatives, my son, my wife, my parents, I told them you should all use Google Apps. You should get your own domain name, get your own identity on the internet, port it over to Google Apps account, get busy with Google Docs. Um, my son and my parents and I, we, not, we all collaborate on documents. We're all in different places. We can all work together. And my son, my son is visiting my parents in New Hampshire the other day, and I said, "Hey, I should I should do a hangout. I, we should we should do a hangout, uh, do a, a Google Plus video thing." And then, and, and then I sort of screeched to a halt. Oh wait, we're all using Google Apps. It's just not going to work. So you know, a source of great frustration for me. So um, very quickly. Um, uh, my my book is um, my book is not a how-to book. It's a business book. It's a it's a work of business journalism. If you read uh, my book, you're going to read a lot of stories about entrepreneurs, about large companies, about uh, uh, K-12 schools, universities, and why why they're using their iPad, how they're using the iPad, how that's going. It's a series of stories. My book is the only book of its kind. It's the only book that sort of addresses this whole iPad as productivity in a journalism kind of a capacity. I'm a journalist. I tell stories. And so my book is a very good complement to a lot of other books that are out there that are sort of how to, you know, how to do this, how to do that. Uh, those books are the how. Uh, my book is more the why. So um, I think if you haven't read my book, I, I think you'll, you'll find it enlightening. Uh, the central thesis is that the iPad is great uh, for work. Um, and um, uh, as a tablet devotee, um, I'm very interested in Android. I'm very interested in Android tablets. Um, um, I can't wait to get back to my office because there's a shiny 10-inch uh, ga Galaxy tab waiting for me on my desk there with uh, Verizon LTE. Ooh, I'm really excited about that. Uh, but 
I'm also very frustrated because I'm, I'm sort of rooting for Android. I see how well Android has done on, on, the, on the phone side. But I'm wondering why aren't there more apps for uh, more tablet friendly apps for Android devices? And maybe you can, when we, when we have a conversation, you can shed some light on that. So, um, and I, I just very briefly want to say that I'm very, very, very excited about Chromebooks because the Chromebook, the Chromebook uh, technology uh, appeals to me greatly because uh, I can just crack the lid on one of these devices and see all the tools that I'm familiar with and get right to work. So I'm very excited about Chromebooks. I'm a little torn though. Some of the pluses are, you know, uh, has a keyboard. I'm, I'm hopeless with the iPad's virtual keyboard. I just can't use that thing to save my soul. So being able to have a, a physical keyboard is important. All the web apps I already know, uh, Chromebooks are very affordable. But uh, Chromebooks may be a little ahead of their time. I'm a big science fiction reader and I read about novels that are set in the near future where the internet is this ubiquitous mist that you, know, you never even think about, you never even worry about, it's just there. And um, I don't think we're quite there yet. And I think the Chromebook sort of lives in that future where it's assumed that the internet is always available. And um, we're almost there, but not quite there. So um, one of my big things was what, what happens if you get on a plane with a Chromebook? You, everything screeches to a halt. And I think Google had an answer for me on my flight out here. It was the first flight I was ever on that had Wi-Fi. So I paid five bucks and I had Wi-Fi and I used my Chromebook, yay. So. Um, and just very briefly, my uh, next book um, about Google Plus is, uh, my, my publisher is based in Cupertino, they're called Happy About, and they have a series of Think Aha books which are, are quick reads. Uh, they basically take a concept and they synthesize it down to, to little pithy nuggets of, of wisdom and information. And they, the series tackles every subject under the sun. It's sort of like for, for dummies books, but gr even, gr even more abbreviated. And my publisher talked me into doing a book about uh, uh, Google Plus. So I'm, I'm very, uh, very excited about that. So I'm happy to, to take your questions. Um, Let me just uh, lead it off with a question that's sort of going back into the presentation. I think one thing that, that would be interesting to hear a little more of is uh, some of these particular case studies, uh, uses of the iPad that you, or, or tablets generally, that you thought were unexpected, really interesting. You mentioned TV anchors. Uh, maybe just two or three of these things that kind of uh, opened your eyes or got you thinking a different direction with how this new form factor might be used. Well, the iPad, uh, I must confess, I'm, I'm a little set in my ways, frankly. Uh, I, I, I'm very fond of my desktop computer when everyone's using laptops. I'm very fond of traditional computers when everybody's using tablets. So I, I must confess, even though I'm a tech writer, you know, sometimes I get set in my ways and, and the new stuff initially confuses me a little bit. And it took me a while to understand that tablets, they have very little onboard storage. You know, tablets are windows. They're windows into the cloud. It's a very Google concept, and in my book, I was it was very interesting to run into example after example after example of companies that sort of figured out, hey, you know, all we have to do is stash our stuff in the cloud and just give everybody tablets, and you know, architectural consultants that are at work sites or whatever, and they can just they can just punch up their box.net accounts and pull up all their information and. Um, Companies have been thinking along these lines for a very long time, but they had never uh, had hardware which sort of lent itself to this. Every, the hardware that existed before that was very heavy, very awkward, very hard to use. So the iPad c came in and fill, filled a need that had existed there for a long time, a need that people had already felt and uh, had been asking for but it was the right device to sort of solve that problem. That's, that's sort of the fundamental concept that I run into with company after company after company. Like schools, it, it's the same thing. Um, I was recently at uh, a middle school uh, where uh, they were about to deploy, they were about to give every kid an iPad. It was, a, it was a fun day because the students knew the iPads were coming but the teachers were playing coy. They didn't tell the kids 
when the damn things were going to get here. The kids kept asking, when are the iPads coming? The teacher says, oh, I don't know. You know, just go do your work. Um, and then um, the, the PR people at the school said, hey, you might want to come to our auditorium. We're having a pep rally that will have a very interesting ending. And at the end of the pep rally, the, the rotund, you know, this, this, the principal with a big belly, he sort of, sort of waddled onto the, uh, onto the floor of the auditorium and he started, uh, started dancing. And then all of a sudden, all the, all, the, all, the, all the teachers came dashing off the bleachers and they all had t-shirt. The, uh, the school is called Heritage Middle School. And uh, all the, the teachers, all, the t-shirts all said, I heritage. And all these teachers with their black, uh, um, with their black t-shirts, they all started line dancing. And at the end of the line, 10 minutes of line dancing, they unfurled this big banner that said, the iPads are here. And the kids just went berserk. It was amazing. Um, and I mentioned that, um, there's, a, there's sort of a Google, um, Side note to that, I mentioned that you know, the, the excitement, the way the kids went crazy was, was really amazing. And I mentioned that because there's sort of a Google counterpoint to that. I was watching Jimmy Kimmel the other night, and Joshua Topolsky, the very well known tech writer, was on there. And Joshua Topolsky did an Oprah thing. I don't know if any of you guys saw this, he did sort of an Oprah thing where he announced everybody in the, everybody in the audience is getting a Chromebook. And uh, it was the same situation. Everybody went absolutely berserk. You know, somebody, somebody said, uh, it was the best day of my life, man. And, um, and that, the reason I mentioned that is because uh, um, I personally liked the idea of Chromebooks, but I was a little dubious about whether people were going to go for them. And I'm pleasantly surprised to see that they're selling well and that there's, there does seem to be a, a, a degree of underlying enthusiasm for them. And that makes me happy because I think the Chromebook is a great um, uh, counterpoint to the whole tablet thing. I'd like to see both kinds of technologies flourish. So I'm rambling. Any more questions? sort of a follow-up on the, the last one, but I was also curious about some of the other applications like news anchors and stuff that you mentioned. So if you can go and just tell us how people are using tablets in business. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you might have, saw, seen, saw, might have seen a slide I, I whipped through really quick. Um, uh, I was walking uh, through my newsroom one day and, by, and I walked by the desk of a woman. Her job is to monitor the the local TV newscasts. And I walked by her desk and one of the Vanita Sakar, which is a, a, an anchor woman of Indian extraction, extraction she, was, uh, she was doing her newscast. And I walked by the TV on the desk and it was like, I sort of did a double take and I said, is she using an iPad for God's sake? And I, I did a little poking around and as it turns out, KSTP, uh, TV, one of the local, uh, it's a local ABC affiliate where I work, um, they uh, had apparently uh, issued iPads to all their anchors and created uh, a back-end web app that would, uh, that would uh, have all the, the latest scripts and would update. Uh, uh, up to that point, the anchors would, whenever they had scripts to, uh, to use on the, on the set, they would print them out. And if there were any changes, they had to print them out again. And the, the TV station went through just a massive amount of printing money every year. So they issued iPads to, to all the anchors, gave them this web app, says just click the button to refresh to update all the information. And um, not every anchor at the TV station went for it. A lot of them were just kind of old school and they just wouldn't have it. Uh, but this woman, even though she's, um, she's She's not uh, very much of a geek at all. She embraces instantly, um, and she just loves it. And so if you watch her on the news, you can't tell that there's an iPad in front of her, but she's, she's basically using the iPad as, as kind of a, a teleprompter. Um, and there's this other TV station in uh, Duluth, Minnesota, which is northeast of the Twin Cities. They're doing something uh, similar, which is really interesting. Apparently. You can, uh, you can buy a teleprompter, a full teleprompter-like apparatus. 
and that has a slot. You slide the iPad in, and the iPad uh, sort of interacts with mirrors that are built into the device, and that becomes a teleprompter that uh, journalists can sort of use, uh, use in the field to sort of read off the iPad. So that's, that's a very, you know, it's a very interesting example of a specialized way that the, that the iPad is being used in a particular kind of a niche industry. If you watch the, the royal wedding, um, the ABC anchors that were sitting in their little booths overlooking Buckingham Palace, they were all, they were all using iPads and holding up you know, the latest thing from Twitter or whatever. So the, the, the tablet, uh, and specifically the iPad, is really, really taking off in television journalism. They're just absolute, TV journalists are just absolutely nuts about it. So. Um, the, uh, uh, when we get into like really specialized situations like uh, construction workers, architectural consultants and so forth working out in the field at project sites or people in warehouses like driving you know, their, uh, their forklifts around. Um, uh, in those kinds of scenarios, the iPad has become absolutely ubiquitous. It's being used everywhere in all those kinds of situations. And that all, again, it all gets, all, gets back to specialized information that needs to be at people's fingertips. Uh, there's this one uh, company that I, that I researched that has a very large warehouse, and they have a lot of people driving the forklifts around, uh, moving things back and forth, and they need to sort of get, periodically get instructions from a back-end database, and in the past they would have to like stop their vehicles, get out of the vehicles, go up to the wall, you know, poke a, poke a monitor to get their latest instructions. And now they just have uh, they just have the iPad sort of built in built into their vehicles, and they're and they're just massively efficient. Um, I researched this one uh, company that does a lot of shipping, you know, out of out of centralized shipping facilities. And the iPad has massively increased their productivity because essentially the iPad is feeding them the, the, informa the information that the workers need on an as-needed basis and sort of telling them what are the most efficient r routes within the facility to get from point A to point B to point C, do this, do that, do that. It just sort of feeds them information at you know, regular intervals and they're not doing these wild goose chases through the facility anymore. They're working in at maximum efficiency. So those are, those are examples. Uh, I'm being general because there are many, uh, many solutions for this. In some cases, uh, native apps are developed. In other cases, uh, they're working off the web. But the, you, know, the, you know, the general idea is the same. So. Um, uh, higher education is really big. I talked to a lot. Of, I've I've talked to. There's this one um, college student who's a who's the um, he's a good friend of a friend of mine, and he was the first uh, college student to take an iPad w around with him to class. He take the iPad with the keyboard, and he's he's kind of a grumpy guy. So he initially was the only person doing this, and everybody would walk walk up to him and say. Is that an iPad? Can you tell me about it? And it was like he just he, he just want, I, he reached the point where he, he just became suicidal because he was sick of hearing that question. He's very relieved now because everybody at his college is doing that now. Do you have a question? Uh, yeah, I actually used to live in Minneapolis for the last uh, three years, and I still read the Star Tribune and the Pioneer Press and NPR News and MinPost. And uh, one thing I noticed was that I never actually I never saw tech columns in most of the newspapers, or maybe I just wasn't looking for them. Do you find that uh, local news and, and newspapers like the Pioneer Press are really uh, pushing for tech, or because of all the cutbacks and buyouts that they're just kind of letting PC Mag and CNET do all that sort of work? I'm sorry, you didn't, you didn't see a lot of tech content? Exactly, yeah. Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't even know the Pioneer Press had a tech column. And granted, I wasn't specifically looking for it, but it didn't seem like it was promoted. And I, I just kind of wonder, is there a place for uh, local news to to have coverage like that, or do you find that that's kind of fading away? Check one. Yeah, it's uh, it's sort of a case by case situation. The St. Paul Pioneer Press has me. I write about consumer technology. 
that partly involves reviewing products, that partly involves researching local stories that have sort of a uh, technology bent. Just to give you an example, last Sunday I had a, uh, an article on the front page of the Sunday paper about social media overload. Uh, the, the, the subject that, that triggered that, you know, the reason that I did that story was because of Google Plus, and you know, some people were saying, oh, geez, and now there's another social network. And so I interviewed a lot of people and sort of asked them, you know, how, you know, how are you dealing with, with all of these networks that are sort of making demands on your attention. So that's what I do at the Pioneer Press. The Star Tribune uh, doesn't have anybody like me, but they do have a guy who writes a tech help column, and that guy writes, you know, business stories. And so each of the, of the news entities at, at the, in the Twin Cities does it, does it a little differently, and I think that is the sort of thing that is reflected in, in other news markets as well. Um, technology coverage at mainstream newspapers has faded a little bit. You know, not, not as many papers are doing that. Not as many papers have dedicated tech sections uh, like they used to, but um, uh, the Pioneer Press still thinks, seems to think that uh, they have, uh, have a place for me, so I'm grateful for that. So. A lot of the use cases that you listed um, for the iPad, especially the most, um, the most recent ones, uh, they seem like things that could be done with a any portable computer, a laptop, uh, maybe even a smartphone, uh, possibly a Chromebook, but maybe that's too recent. Um, so what would you say is uh, you know, the, the factor that makes it, the iPad specifically, that makes this all take off? Um. Uh, the, the one thing that people have sort of told me over and over is that the iPad uh, very often is like a, a piece of paper. Like if you have something on a piece of paper and you want to show it to somebody, you say, here, take a look at this. And the, so the iPad in meetings, you know, salespeople sort of uh, talking to prospects in hallways or, you know, university administrators, you know, gathering around a, uh, an office table or whatever. The iPad there's a level of intimacy uh, to the iPad because you can just pull up something on your screen and just hand it to somebody else. It's a little more awkward to do that with a laptop with the lid and you have to sort of fumble and pull something up with your mouse. Um, there's, a na there's a neighbor of mine who's in the book. He, he works for an engineering company. Uh, his company in Minnesota does a lot of business with, with companies in the Orient and they have, a, they have a factory that has you know, certain specific procedures, things that they make, and they, they came up with a series of videos to sort of show to p potential customers. So they have all these videos queued up on, on the iPad and you know, wherever they are, whenever they're trying to, you know, to sort of woo a new client, uh, they can just sort of pull up the videos on the iPad and the iPad is just the, the perfect device for that. There's something about, um, Presenting information to people on a, on a laptop that that flips the switch in many people. People see, oh, you're going to show me a PowerPoint or something on the laptop, and they just completely zone out. It's sort of a sort of a visceral, sort of instinctive thing. You're gonna you're gonna teach me something on a tablet. You know, they completely switch off. That happens a lot. For some reason, that happens less with the iPad, but maybe because it's a, it's a shiny new toy that everybody's fascinated with. But if you want to get a visual point across to somebody and you're picking the device that you want to do that with, the iPad potentially is a better option because you're, you're going to have a more receptive audience. So the smartphone is obviously another option. You know, the smartphone is a computer in your pocket, but it's very small. So I think the, the iPad, you know, sort of hits that sweet spot. Does that make sense? So any other questions? And is there anybody on uh, VC who has a question as well? We should open it up. Um, can I talk a little bit about Google Plus? I just want to I just want to tell you a little bit uh, about Google Plus. Uh, why I'm excited about it? There's there's there are some iPad uh, connections to that. Um, I want to compliment Google on Google Plus because Google Plus has done something very interesting that I didn't know could be done, which is to create 
a kind of social network that's different from other social networks and fills certain specific needs that I, I didn't even know I had. Um, I, I, this, is, this has all been very interesting for me. Um, I love Twitter. Twitter, to a large degree, is my life. I've met a lot of friends on Twitter. I have a lot of uh, very elaborate, very constructive, you know, very um, fulfilling interactions with other human beings on Twitter. But the the te the, the text limit is um, is a constraining factor. It's, it sort of cramps my sale badly. Facebook is a really creepy place, um, and I think that is largely due to the character of the people who founded Facebook. I'm, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but there's a level of trust that I lack in using Facebook because I, uh, there's a level of trust that I lack in the people that run the place. And it's, a, it's, it's sort of prison-like. You can get in, but it's very hard to get out. Yeah, uh, Facebook fills a role in my life because a lot of my family members are on there, so I, I'm on there because a lot of people are on there that don't use other social networks. Google, as a journalist, um, I have found Google Plus to be liberating uh, because very unexpectedly, it has become for me an alternate blogging platform. I, I like to blog, but the problem with blogs is it's hard to build and to sustain an audience. And I tried a, I tried a little experiment on this trip. I decided that uh, on this trip, I would do the, the, the bulk of the documenting, you know, you know, things that happened to me, pictures I posted, things I wrote about the trip. I would do that at Google Plus, and I discovered to my very pleasant surprise that it's a blogging platform. You can write long posts. You can go back and edit the post. There's an edit button, for God's sake. All the social networks, you can't, you, you write something, you're done. You can't change it. There's a mistake, you can't fix it. Um, you, you, can, you can attach fo photo albums. And so it's, um, and I've been pleasantly surprised by the level of engagement. I'll write something and I get a lot of feedback. I get a lot of plus ones. People comment on it. And so I just want to tell you guys, I think, I think you guys are onto something. I think, I think this is going to work. Um, and I'm, 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 re I'm really pleasantly surprised about that. Um, but what's the deal with, with the app not working on the iPad? I mean, what is up with that? I just, it just kind of blows my mind. And Facebook, by, it, by the way, is, is about to release, if it hasn't already, but released a, an iPad app. So you guys, you guys got to sort of keep up with that. So, so, um, so thank you very much for Google+. Plus. I'm very, very excited about it. So. OK, well, I think if, anybody, uh, if nobody else has questions, I think we're set. So thank you again, Julio. Appreciate it. And thank you, everybody, for coming. Thanks to the folks on VC.